was still timid and shy. I hated people who told the truth bluntly, blurting out that you had a big nose or that your shampoo smelled cheap. Then I studied Keats and his claim that poetry is truth and beauty, and I had no idea what he was talking about until I was 40 years old and saw how truth in a poem makes the hair on the back of my neck rise. Now, when I am the one blurting out truths that other often leave people staring, when I say at my department meeting the very thing that others won't, how alone I become as I speak, a space cleared around me as though I have the plague. That loneliness I can stand. The, the other loneliness, the truth we can barely admit to ourselves at 3 a.m. when we're lying in bed unable to sleep. That truth, the one too ugly to admit. How we want to climb to the top of a tower and shake off all the arms that need our comfort and the way we need to be selfish and to climb into that tower and not let down our hair, to be for at least a little while only for ourselves, selfish and quiet and alone. Thanks for this. Thank you. Grant is revolutionary letter number 75. And it's in your book. It wasn't in the last one. Grant. write a single line without a cosmology, a cosmogony laid out before all eyes. There is no part of yourself you can separate out, saying, this is memory, this is sensation, this is the work I care about, this is how I make a living. It is whole, it is a whole, it always was whole. You do not make it so. There's nothing to integrate. You are a presence. You are an appendage of the work. The work stems from, hangs from, the heaven you create. Every man, every woman, carries a firmament inside. And the stars in it are not the stars in the sky. Without imagination, there is no memory. Without imagination, there is no sensation. Without imagination, there is no will, desire. History is a living weapon in your hand, and you have imagined it. It is thus that you find out for yourself. History is the dream of what can be. It is the relation between things in a continuum of imagination. What you find out for yourself is what you <laughs> select out of an infinite sea of possibilities. No one can inhabit your world, yet it is not lonely. The ground of imagination is fearlessness, discourse, is videotape of a movie of a shadow play, but the puppets are in your hand, your county, in a multi-dimensional chess, which is divination and strategy. The war that matters is the war against the imagination. All other wars are subsumed in the ultimate famine is the starvation of the imagination. It is death to be sure, but the undead seek to inhabit someone else's world. The ultimate claustrophobia is the syllogism. The ultimate claustrophobia is it all adds up. <laughs> Nothing adds up. And nothing stands in for anything else. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only
only war that matters is a war against the imagination. All other wars are subsumed in it. There's no way out of the spiritual battle. There's no way you can avoid taking sides. No matter what you do, I'm sorry, you can, there is no way you cannot have a poetics no matter what you do. Plumber, baker, teacher, you do it in the consciousness of making or not making your world. You have a poetics. You step into the world like a suit of ready-made clothes, or you etch in life. Your firmament spills into the shape of your room, the shape of the poem, of your body, of your love. <coughs> a woman's life, a man's life, is an allegory. Dig it. There's no way out of the spiritual battle. The war is the war against the imagination. You can't sign up as a conscientious objector. <laughs> the war of the world hangs here right now in the balance. It is a war for this world, to keep it a veil of soul making. The taste in all our mouths is the taste of our power, and it is bitter as death. Bring yourself home to yourself, into the garden. The guy at the gate with a flaming sword is yourself. The war is the war of the human imagination, and no one can fight it but you, and no one can fight it for you. The imagination is not only holy, it is precise. It is not only fierce, it is practical. Men die every day for lack of it. It is vast and elegant. Intellectus means light of the mind. It is not discourse. It is not even language. The inner sun. The polis is constellated around the sun. The fire is central. <laughs>